The Great Fridge Heist There was never a dull moment at Puddlebrook High, but no one expected the biggest mystery of the century to involve the school's fridge. It all started on a Monday morning when Principal Shivers walked into the teacher's lounge and screamed. Not because she had seen a ghost, or even because the coffee machine was broken, but because the school fridge, packed with the teacher's precious lunches, was empty. And I mean completely empty. Not a yogurt, not a slice of pizza, not even a limp carrot stick remained. It was like a vacuum had sucked up every last scrap of food. The teachers were outraged. Mrs. Higgsby, the science teacher, nearly fainted when she realized her perfectly wrapped quinoa salad had vanished. Mr. Flobber, the gym coach, claimed his protein shake had been stolen, though rumor had it he never even brought lunch. Naturally, the blame fell on the students. Enter our heroes, Zeke, Lydia, and Freddie, three best friends, known for their love of snacks, but also known for not being thieves. They were sitting in detention for accidentally turning the principal's office into a giant pillow fort when they overheard two teachers talking about the missing lunches. No way! Zeke exclaimed. Who steals lunches? Freddy scratched his head. Maybe someone was really hungry. Lydia raised an eyebrow. Or maybe it's something bigger. What if there's a lunch thief on the loose? And they won't stop until they've stolen every sandwich in Puddle Brook. The three friends knew what had to be done. They were going to crack this case wide open. It wasn't just about food anymore. It was about justice. Their first stop was the cafeteria, where old Mrs. Crumpet, the lunch lady, stood guard over her famous meatloaf surprise. You kids best not be here for more food, she said, glaring at them through her thick glasses. Actually, we're here to solve the mystery of the stolen lunches, Lydia said confidently. Mrs. Crumpet snorted. Good luck with that. Whoever did it must be slipperier than a butter eel. Do you, uh, butter eels? Zeke asked, confused. Never mind that. Freddy interrupted. Mrs. Crumpet, did you see anything suspicious? The lunch lady paused. Well, come to think of it, I did hear a noise late last night while I was locking up. Sounded like rustling. But when I went to check, there was nothing but a shadow zipping out the back door. A shadow? Zeke whispered dramatically. Guys, we're dealing with a phantom thief. Armed with this new information, the trio set up a stick out that very night. They hid behind a stack of gym mats near the teacher's lounge, armed with walkie-talkies, a flashlight, and a bag of gummy bears for sustenance. Hours passed. Zeke dozed off twice, and Lydia had almost finished her book when suddenly, Freddy nudged them both. Look! A dark figure slipped into the teacher's lounge, moving like a ninja, swift and silent. The trio crept forward, peeking through the doorway. The mysterious figure opened the fridge, pulled out. A gigantic bag of peanut butter sandwiches. Peanut butter sandwiches? Lydia whispered. That's the loot? Zeke's eyes widened. Wait. I know that guy. And he did. The thief wasn't a phantom or a criminal mastermind, it was none other than Mr. Flobber, the gym coach. He had been sneakily hoarding food all along, planning to use it to build the ultimate post-workout snack tower to impress the other teachers. His protein shakes were just the beginning. The next morning, they confronted him. 
Why, Mr. Flaba, why? He blushed and mumbled something about bulking up for beach season, but the damage was done. The teachers got their lunches back, the mystery was solved, and Mr. Flaber was forever known as the great snack bandit of Puddlebrook. As for Zeke, Lydia, and Freddie, they were celebrated as heroes. They even got a week off from detention until they accidentally set off the school sprinklers trying to roast marshmallows in the science lab. But hey, you can't solve every problem with a bag of gummy bears. Or can you?